Hi, my name is Ben Curry. We are solar installers and electricians based in Derby. Our company is Electrical Innovations. We are fitting pure drive battery units and solar inverters. Today on this job, we've got um, solar panels have gone, gone on the roof already, and we're going to be talking you through a step-by-step -step guide. Our customers are really liking the pure drive systems. They're our preferred battery that we like to recommend to our customers because, mostly because they look great on the wall. That was our first thing that drew us towards it. Um, they've got all the features that you need from a battery storage unit and they look fantastic when they're fitted. So let's get into the install. I can show you a step-by-step -step guide on how it all goes together and how we can fit the, the three battery units with the Solus Inverter. To install the batteries, all you need is a drill, a spirit level and a screwdriver. So the first thing we do is open up the box and make sure we've got everything we need. Um, it comes with the battery in the box and a mounting bracket. There's a pack with all your instructions and commissioning sheets. There's also the connection cables between battery and inverter for the, the DC power and also communication cables as well. Finally, there's a pack of wall fixings that you use for the battery to mount it on a wall. So my next job is to get the inverter on the wall and get it all wired in. Um, so I'm just going to get on with that now and, oh, hang on, there we go, look, the Solace guy's walking by. Come on in, mate. Oh, hey, man. Hey, Good sorry, to see just you. Uh, walking perfect, down the street there. Perfect timing. Yeah. So hopefully you can tell us a bit about what we need to know citing the inverter. Right, you want to pick a good location and you want clearance on the left, right and top and bottom. So on the left and right and the top it's 300 millimeters and then to the floor it's 500 millimeters. So we've got loads of space around there so right. perfect spot for it just here. And then uh, most important part of the installing the Souls Hybrid is the meter. Because the meter is going to make decisions for you based off of your input and output of your property. So, so do you have it installed right? So this is all installed and it's running out to the meter box where the main tail is coming into the property. Oh, okay. And we put a CT around there, don't we? Yeah, let's go check it out. Brilliant. So we're at the meter box now. This is the CT clamp that comes with the Solus inverter. It's labelled up, it says house and grid and there's an arrow. So the idea is you position this so the house is on this side and it's pointing towards the grid. So in the case of a meter box like this, your grid is your, your main incoming supply. So here for us, we've got the live tail, which is coming out of the isolator switch. And you can see these tails here going to the meter and then to the, the main supply to the property. So this live tail, if we position it this way, the house is this side, it's going to our Henley block and then to the consumer units. The grid is this side, so that's the right way around. Now, you have to make sure this is properly fitted like that, because if that's slightly open, just even a little bit like this, it's not going to read properly from experience. So <laughs> you've got that there, house and grid, that's the right way around. These cables are pre-wired, you've got ferrules on the other end. You shouldn't shorten this or extend it, so this pre-wired section is, um, is what you've got to work with. If you've got uh, a distance problem, so this is too far away, there are other meters you can use, um, but for this kit, this is your CT clamp, this is your cable that you keep the length of, and you wire it back to that uh, energy meter we've just been looking at. So the next job is to get the inverter on the wall. Comes with a nice, easy to fit bracket, it goes on there somewhere. We're gonna measure our clearances first, mark the holes and get that all fitted up. Then we can pop the inverter on and start adding the wiring to it. So next, we're gonna get all the cabling into the inverter itself. We've got our DC cable in here, ready to go in. We've also got our battery cables. So this is the kit you get with the Solis, but we're not gonna use that because you get these with the pure drive units and these are, these are ready made to go to connect the Solis inverter to pure drive. So they go into there. And then we've got various communication cables on the bottom of here. Your AC plug goes into this one. We can put that in now. This is the one from the Solis smart meter that we've just wired, which is labeled here as smart meter. So everything only goes in one way. So all these plugs are set, so you can't really get them wrong. 
Now what we have struggled with in the past is when our installs have just not connected it right. So if you, if you check everything twice, you'll make sure it's all in proper places and you, you twist the terminals down and things like that and you have no issues at all. So that's our meter in. Next up, we'll stop putting our DC battery cables in. Now we use a bit of chunking on ours just to make it look neater and keep all the wiring hidden away, but you don't need to. It's all colour coded. Clips in, nice and easy. And these cables will then go to your first battery unit. So if you've got one on site, these ends will just go straight to that battery. If you've got multiple ones, this will go to the first unit. You get two more cables. This one comes with the Solis, and this comes with the Pure Drive. It's essentially the same thing. Cable does the same. It comes with different plugs on the end, and it's all labeled. So battery, Solis. Now, because we're fitting Pure Drive batteries, for me, I'd always fit the um, fit the Pure Drive kit. However, if the inverter's going outside, you need the waterproof end on the inverter, so you have to fit the Solis one. Again, that's got the inverter on, that's got the waterproof end on one end, which is labelled up as inverter. And this one is labelled up to battery, but it's not waterproof. So just depending on which arrangement you've got, for us it's all inside, so we're just going to fit this one this way around. So we're going to mount the pure drive unit now. You get this bracket, it goes on the wall. They're stable enough to sit on the floor, but obviously you don't want them tipping over and all of that. So brackets on the wall. This then hooks in around here. It's really easy to fit. We're going to hold the bracket there and take a measurement for the height. And then we're just going to mark it on the wall and drill the holes. So these are the bolts that come with the kit. If it's going on the floor, we can probably just use normal wall screws. If it's hanging off the floor, you need the properly rated wall bolts to take the weight because these are 60 kilograms. I normally just nip them up and then offer the inverter into, um, the battery into place to make sure it fits. So the battery is ready to go on the wall. I fit the bracket. We just need to lift this. It weighs 60 kilograms, so usually two person lift. So, oh, hang on. Pure Drive guy, come on in, come on How in, good to see you. Thanks for coming and helping. So we'll get this on the wall, yeah? Yep, let's do it. Hi right, guys, so I'm Callum and I work at Pure Drive Energy. Um, so here we have the five kilowatt hour module. On this specific install, we're gonna be installing two more modules. Um, so these guys, you know what installers love about us is it's super easy install. Um, so it's just a couple of terminals on the top linking the DC power cables between the batteries. Um, we also have the communication cables but we'll talk more about that once we've got the other two batteries on the wall. Um, so let's fast forward to once we've got the other two batteries on the wall. So we've got all the batteries on the wall. Um, the way these work, if there's just one of them, is you, you just choose the first one and the cables that we've installed from the inverter we put in here earlier, these will just go straight onto these connections here. So, from your down terminal on your first battery, you've got to put in a standard RJ45 patch lead um, to the up of the next one over. Now in the kits, you get one of these cables with each with each battery. Now this is the Solis to battery. Now it is labeled Solis to battery. If you look in the terminal here, you can see that there's only actually two cores in it. So it's not a true data cable, it's just a two core cable. So you can't use this for the interconnection between the batteries. So from battery one to battery two, and then battery two to battery three, you were going to the down terminal again and you were going over and in the up terminal of the last one. Okay, now these will hide under the covers, so you, know, you can keep them nice and short if you can. The battery kits 
all come with these connecting cables and these do the job from the inverter to the first battery but they also join your batteries together now you can lose all your slack down the back there's plenty of space back there all the batteries are the same whether it's a slave or a master it's just this down terminal here that makes a difference So that's all three systems on. The inverter's up and running. It's just waiting for the PV and we're good to go. We'll get Travis back in now to explain the settings on the Solus inverter and how you set this up to run with the pure drive batteries. Hey guys, we're gonna set up the inverter now. We're gonna do a really simple setup. We're gonna do, obviously, with the pure drive batteries and just basic self-use is which, what 99% of people are gonna use. So right now we have an alarm and a bat name fail. So that means that you haven't set the battery right. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna go to advanced settings, 0010, down, down, up, enter. And then we're gonna go to storage energy set. And then battery select is where I go. And right now it's wanky. So that doesn't sound like pure drive, so we're gonna change that to pure drive. Pure drive's right there, press enter. Over uh, discharge SOC, that's what the battery will stop discharging at. Uh, I like 20%, that's what's default, and then force charge is 10%. And then you can all, uh, change your force charge limit. And basically what force charge limit is, is once it hits 10%, that's what it'll charge from the grid at. So you can lower that or raise that however you want. So you hit, um, Escape and then save and send into the light colored selector. There, oh, see, we went from alarm to operation. And then we're gonna go down to storage mode select. And you click into self use, make sure that's on. It'll go to the next stage of the menu. Time of use, make sure it says stop. Uh, save and send, light colored selector. And then charging from grid is very important. Always allow or your force charge setting will not work. And then what we're gonna do is escape, escape. I like to go up to control parameters. I'm not gonna use the backup port in this installation, so I hit enter, I disable it, save and send, and that's it. Okay, so that's another install done. This is all up and running, thanks to Travis. Um, batteries are on, they look great. All we've got to do now is tidy the job up, job up, a few finishing touches to do, and this one's signed off and done, we can move on to the next one. So, um, Pure Drive and Solace, it's a great combo. We're really happy fitting these that I've chosen to install equipment, so we'll be doing lots more of these in the future. So thanks so much for watching along. We're Electrical Innovations, based in Derby. So if there's anything you need, Solace, Pure Drive related, feel free to give us a call.